done with the MQTT, it is useful to know uh, what is the actual standard uh, with which uh, one should implement the MQTT. Supposing you want to start implementing MQTT from scratch, you want to develop the full protocol and uh, the, re the related commands which are uh, part of the pro uh, part of the protocol, you should know that right. So, the standard should be known very well that is indeed the basis for anything. So, now let me point out you point you out to the actual standard. The standard is from OSS it is called uh, another standard which and the current version is MQTT 3.1. If you look carefully into the standard it tells you everything about the uh, explanation of the, um, of the protocol. The abstract is I would say one of the best abstracts I have ever seen which describes the full protocol. I will just read it in fact, it is the real highlight of the thing. It is a client server publish subscribe messaging protocol it is very well written the lightweight open simple and designed to be used uh, designed so as to be easy to implement. These characteristics made it ideal for in many situations including constrained environments such as communication in machine to machine and internet of things context where a small code footprint is required and or network bandwidth is at a premium. The protocol runs over TCP IP or other network protocols that provide ordered lossless bidirectional connections. It features uh, its, uh, it, its features include use of uh, publish subscribe message pattern which provides one to many message distribution and decoupling of applications. A messaging transport that is agnostic to the content of the payload three qualities of uh, service for message delivery you know this well now we saw some demonstrations of it at most once where messages are delivered according to the best efforts of the operating environment loss can occur this level could be used for example with ambient sensor data where it does not matter if an individual uh, reading is lost as the next one will be published soon after see essentially when you are measuring an ambient environment um, the temperatures do not change drastically. So, even if you lose one packet it does not matter right. Uh, so, that is what it says. So, look at how it can be applied at least once where messages are assured to arrive, but duplicates and occur there is really no harm if multiple messages uh, containing a sensor data um, actually happen right. So, in that situation you do not mind even if it is an at least once uh, kind of thing you have a way by filtering out multiple messages that come there is intelligence on the system to remove those messages that is something that you can actually do. Exactly once where message are assured uh, to arrive exactly once this level could be used for example, with billing systems where duplicate or lost messages could lead to incorrect charges being applied. You obviously, do not want your utility bill to produce your utility bill to appear twice and you pay twice the amount right. You do not want that to happen all applications which use MQTT and which use uh, these utility bills energy metering for instance. Um, you do not want the, those uh, things to appear twice. So, this is a nice thing you can actually use it with exactly once a small transport overhead and protocol exchanges minimized to reduce network traffic a mechanism to notify interested parties when an abnormal disconnection happens last will and testament right. If you recall that is what it says a mechanism to notify interested parties when an abnormal disconnection uh, occurs. So, it is a beautiful abstract and uh, speaks uh, the, uh, all about the protocol itself you can go and read this document in great detail cover it in great detail it does mention about um, all the messages that um, we uh, look at. Uh, for instance, just going through the the table of contents organization of MQTT uh, terminology, the data representations, control packet information, MQTT control packet information, then uh, MQTT control packets, connect message which we saw last time, connect acknowledge connection request publish publish message, pub back publish acknowledgement, pub break publish received right. 
then uh, pubrel publish release, pubcomp publish complete, subscribe, subscribe to topics, subac, subscribe acknowledgement, unsubscribe, unsubscribe from topics, unsubac, unsubscribe acknowledgement, ping rec, ping request, ping response, ping, res, ping resp, ping response, disconnect, disconnect notification and uh, quality of service 0, 1, 2. Uh, topic names and topic filters, handling errors and uh, authentication of clients by the server, authorization of clients by the server, authentication of the server by the client. Um, so, all of this falling under this uh, category of 5 which is the security right. I would say you can handle everything but it is almost uh, uh, you know hard for you to handle this security part right because um, the, the thing is protocol we can I mean I can show you many demonstrations uh, but that is not going to take us uh, I mean sure you will pick it up very fast. But you must spend sufficient amount of time on security. I can tell you this if IoT has to succeed because of you or because of us or any one of us here the only way by which it can actually become a big success is if you handle security correctly. It is a big pillar energy is a big pillar security is another big pillar these two requirements have to be met you have to start innovating start looking around how you can get in security into the IOT systems. So, IOT without minus security is not going to take you very far, IOT minus handling power is not going to take you far, IOT without analytics and proper data understanding and information is not going to take you very far. So, you need data analysts to take care of all the data that is being generated, data handling has to happen on several gateways okay. And you must be able to handle secure data communication. So, security is a big pillar you need 10 year lifetime. So, you need energy management power management uh, also. So, these pillars have to be working together in order to make IOT a great success ok. So, please spend sufficient significant amount of time understanding this chapter 5. I will assist you in, uh, in making a few small demonstrations with our uh, project staff Ms. Tejaswini has spent sufficient time and we will show you quick demos of these things at the moment right. We will finish that, but it does not solve the whole problem. You need to understand this thoroughly sit down and understand this chapter thoroughly and of course, we will be happy to take questions on that. So, this is very very important. So, play, pay attention to chapter 5, chapter 6 is web socket anything with respect to real timeness bidirectional data transfer uh, with respect to use of MQTT in real time environments bidirectional transfer means you have to use you have to understand chapter number 6 which is indeed web socket if time permits we will try and see if we can spend time there. The rest is all straightforward. Uh, there is conformance, conformance targets, MQTT server, MQTT client and so on. But um, I think it is important for you while I stress that you need to understand the uh, security chapter in great detail, uh, we have to also I want to draw your attention really to this uh, very good abstract which was written about um, MQTT itself right. Uh, it says um, small code footprint is required and network bandwidth is at a premium you should use this protocol. So, why MQTT is actually listed um, is, is actually listed here right and it also says it runs over TCP IP and so on. Ideal in many situations it says I want to point you to something I saw on the web and I thought I should just uh, you know quickly show you some numbers ok. If you get I will now make a comparison of HTTP sorry let us take a new page. Uh, so, that we will be able to understand this thoroughly. Let us take a new page and let us start with uh, MQTT and its uh, comparison to let us say I will put HTTP 
on one side and MQTT on the other. You know this right, this is pub sub, this is rest representational state transfer two paradigms. You want to get single piece of data there is a nice comparison you need 302 bytes this is information I got from the web but you can actually experiment this and try and find out yourself you need just 68 bytes okay 68 bytes single if you want to this is to get supposing you want to send right if you want to send single piece of data this is 320 bytes and here it is just 47 bytes if you want to get 100 pieces of data get 100 100 pieces of data this is 12600 zero zero bytes and this is 2445 four bytes right. So, you can go on like this right which is a clear indicator that MQTT is a clear winner it is a winner and it actually justifies what was written in the abstract particularly if you are looking at sensor data sensor networks and sensor data. Therefore, why MQTT if you ask yourself well one of the reasons why MQTT is because of its uh, extremely small uh, data packet size uh, everything is sent in uh, binary form and uh, no comparison at all to HTTP's uh, HTTP protocol particularly restful architecture. Remember you do not want to compromise on security I keep telling you this very important you have HTTPS in the case of uh, uh, in the in the in the, in the uh, HTTP world you need something very similar in the MQTT world therefore, the chapter on MQTT from the uh, standard is a very critical uh, part. So, you have to read that chapter and therefore, find out how you can add security to that to this uh, particular. So, no compromise no compromise in security, but at the same time reduction in the uh, you know I would say reduction in the uh, payloads uh, gives you the flexibility of uh, trying to ensure that it is highly optimized for sensor networks it is optimized for low bandwidth links it is meant for optimized for low footprint uh, systems particularly in the IOT world which is essentially doing some sensing and some communication uh, some computing communication and some control very specified activity extremely good because it has that published subscribe article uh, uh, paradigm and it can do a one to many which was uh, not possible in the case of HTTPS because it uses TCP the complete delinking between the uh, publisher and the subscriber passing through the broker gives a great advantage. So, all these things have to be borne in your mind when you try to choose pick MQTT as against other protocols which may be useful right. So, this is uh, one thing just continuing on the HTTP um, uh, restful I will say rest architecture and uh, MQTT the pub sub architecture uh, just let us quickly finish off this what are the things that you have here in terms of verbs. Um, so, basically before you go on to that this is uh, in if you look at this this is more like uh, a style is more like a document right it is more document uh, lot of things written up there formatted well. Um, is more I would say more like a nice beautiful document every time a, a page is uploaded I mean downloaded onto your browser you will see it like a like a beautiful document it is like a document centric system and there is a request and then there is a response 
right in the HTTP case but here this is more I am looking for certain sensor data right so it is more data centric more about numbers more about sensing more about data that is going through um, uh, in terms of uh, whatever protocol that you use it is more about using of the data it is more data centric and uh, it is indeed using publish subscribe all right this is one. The second thing is if you look at some of the verbs that are used uh, in the MK in the HTTP world you have get right you have post then you have um, uh, post then you have delete and so on right the many more such uh, things get post delete um, put put is also there post put and so on anyway that is all these are all the verbs which are there. Here you have very simple pub sub unsub right. Um, and so on very simple simple protocol very simple protocol easy to learn right pretty easy to learn and uh, this is message size if you take if you take message size this is large large I would say this is just it can be as small as even 2 bytes minimum header means I have not got into the header detail but if you go through the document you will see the header detail uh, it can be as small as minimum header can be even as small as this. What about quality of service quality of service right you cannot say how you want your document to come. Uh, all right. So, essentially there is nothing here there is nothing here right um, but here you have 3 levels right uh, and if you look at data distribution data this is mostly 1 to 1 here it is 1 to many right because of the decoupling you are able to do one to many. So, therefore, there are major advantages uh, if you use. Uh, so, I am trying to say why MQTT if you ask your question these are some of the super comparisons that you can think of when you uh, actually talk about uh, MQTT. So, this is um, in some term in, in some form something very uh, useful for you to keep in the back of your mind uh, before you go. But you may now ask another question which may be of uh, interest to uh, interest to us but before i go on let me let me just quickly put down a, a few things that will sort of clear um, the uh, uh, discussion on mqtt uh, you must note that uh, session is an important thing right you must look at sessions so I want you to look at sessions um, identifies an attachment basically well I have copied this from the standard document. So, um, you have nothing to you, you do not have to worry about anything here. So, you just have to look at sessions attaches and uh, identifies an attachment of a client of a client right uh, to a server. And all communication between client and server takes place as part of this session that is very important. Then you may also want to look at publish I do not want to elaborate this we have done this earlier subscribe retain message. So, I would say look up these things very important because they are all the ones that will help you understand uh, uh, several things uh, nice things about the protocol all right. So, this is one thing and then there are number of messages do not forget to look up MQTT's uh, messages connect then 
you have Konak we have already seen this but I want you to look up all these things and then that will allow you to understand um, the protocol very well. Then there is a format there is a packet format format you can easily look up I do not want to spend time looking at that so, there is a message formats for each one of them connect for instance connect has a message format ok. Um, so, there will be a message type then uh, there will be the all, all kinds all the different fields which are there. So, I want I do not want to spend time there I expect you to uh, look up um, that thing, but before we move on to anything with respect to security which I promised I will show you some demo. I thought I should also tell you something about how MQTT obviously all this uh, with respect to MQTT is all fine if you talk about um, uh, systems like you know uh, the which have capabilities like let us say a raspberry pi right uh, or uh, odroid board or um, uh, boards uh, which are like beagle bone black or duono boards beagle board beagle bone black raspberry pi so on which actually run ubuntu or variants of uh, some linux essentially. How does MQTT work on very small pieces of hardware? how does it work because you are talking about sensors which are sensing some environment and they want to push data uh, using MQTT small little dots right. They have a small uh, wire uh, ultra low power interface it could be Zigbee it could be Bluetooth or one of them and uh, it mostly it is Zigbee let us say because uh, Zigbee is very popular for uh, building small uh, sensor uh, nodes and it is a very popular protocol. So, if you are using that how will you get all this stack running on it? You have a huge application stack MQTT stack with all these commands which we discussed and all that obviously, it was not going to work. So, you have to pay attention to another type of uh, small variant of the same protocol which is called MQTT S ok. There is a full specification for MQTT S this runs on embedded platforms. So, if you ask me what is MQTT S it is meant for sensor networks ok. It is called MQTT S it is optimized for Zigbee well known Zigbee it uses 6 low pan I am sure you know already what this means 6 low pan is IPv6 for IPv6 for low power personal area networks ok. This is IPv6 adaptation for constrained platforms 6 low pan and you do not have to use TCP you can use UDP ok. Traditionally MQTT uses a uh, TCP and you can you actually use it on UDP it is meant for low bandwidth it is meant for low bandwidth wireless sensor networks right and uh, frame sizes are small I will say small frame sizes small frame sizes and simple devices right and it is what is good about it is it is really compatible with the normal MQTT brokers compatible that is the beauty right. Obviously, if you want to make it compatible it is not going to be straightforward for you ok. You have to build a nice system uh, which I want to draw and show you uh, the uh, picture related to how you can actually enable enabling I will say enabling um, enabling MQTT S enabling MQTT S. How will you do this? 
essentially uh, the way it goes let me just quickly uh, draw a picture for you which will allow us to uh, understand it better. Your MQTTS client is okay let me put it inside this right. So, that is the right way to do essentially we will talk to now what is known as an MQTT S gateway okay. This gateway in turn will now talk to MQTT broker okay that is the nice thing. In fact, this gateway can actually be part of this system. So, I will put a dot here showing that this system while it is nicely demonstrated shown this way you can actually push this gateway inside this hardware itself which is it could be uh, I, I would say when I talk about an MQTT kind of a broker hardware I am referring to systems like raspberry pi please note huh? uh, raspberry pi or I may be referring to beagle bone right beagle uh, bone or I could be referring to odroid odroid system and so on which are okay I mean in terms of uh, they are alt low power still, but they have a better functionality compared to extremely small devices uh, like this. So, you can have these MQTT clients essentially this is a client this is also a client and they are all connecting to this uh, nice uh, gateway and see the beauty this now run UDP they can run UDP and up to this layer they actually run 6 low pan right IPv6 for low power personal area networks there is an RFC on this very popular uh, implementation of IPv6 for constrained environments is indeed 6 low pan in fact it works very well on Zigbee. Uh, so, that is uh, Zigbee, uh, Zigbee modes this can be TCP right this can already be uh, TCP there are other ways by which you can do that you can also have if you do not want to pass it through a gateway you can also use what is known as an MQTTS forwarder. So, there is another possibility you can also use an MQTT S forwarder and uh, so clients can connect on uh, UDP what kind of clients MQTT S clients can connect on UDP and connect to this forwarder forwarder will not change anything it will simply change it will simply forward that packet on UDP to the broker and the broker in turn will change it and maintain a certain uh, information okay it is just a simple uh, um, forwarding uh, system. So, it has to be UDP all through and uh, it in turn converts uh, into a client connection and so on. So, either you can essentially pass it through a forwarder in which case you might now ask a question why do I need uh, this forwarder at all I can as well send directly to the broker yeah surely you can also send it directly to the broker over UDP. So, there are many many scenarios that you can try that is the, the point I am trying to say is that there are many scenarios in which you can use it nobody stops you from trying out your own uh, scenario okay. If you are able to configure and cleverly write some scripts why not you can as well do um, this thing uh, nicely okay. So, um, so, there are brokers there is a gateway and all that okay. Now, it is not that uh, this is just going to work like this what is special about MQTTS why is it written for this means you have one difficulty already here right. This MQTTS protocol which is um, running on these very small tiny systems have actually got to find this gateway where is it they have to do which means gateway 
discovery is important either the gateway can broadcast broadcast periodically or clients have to search right either the clients have to search or the gateway has to broadcast periodically correct. So, which brings us to very simple things again gateway advertisement exists a d v e e r t i s e meant gateway advertisements exist ok. So, this is coming from the gateway gateway is actually giving these advertisements this is the m q t t uh, s I would say very important m q t t s gateway. And uh, if you if the client is trying he is going to do a search for gateway for some reason you have to put everything in cap and you get um, if you do a search that is this guy who m q t t uh, s client ok. Let me not muddle it write it little bigger in fact I should not write bigger than the gateway circle because gateway is expected to be uh, little more powerful this is m q t t s client ok client is um, sending it out for in response to uh, search gateway this gateway can actually issue back what is known as a g w info. So, now this completes the story you can have periodic transmission of gateway advertisements. If somehow the m q t t s client missed that periodic advertisement it can also issue a search gateway for which the gateway can respond with g w info that is what essentially this whole thing means. There is something nice about uh, these gateways see another problem these m q t t s gateways will encounter um, will be that they will be connected to uh, they will they'll have connections data coming from many 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 sensor nodes because now you are talking about uh, several hundreds and hundreds of sensors which are trying to publish their data right which means clients what kind of clients m q t t s clients can actually connect to multiple gateways. So, that load balancing of when I say load balancing it basically means data 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 load balancing oops it is not coming out well let me rewrite balance balancing is possible. So, now you can see uh, it is it actually scales quite well ok. Um, so, that is another thing. So, this is one other important thing there is another final thing that you may want to actually note that this gateway itself uh, operates. So, sorry this gateway itself operates in two modes right operates gateway operates ok. I, I will clean up this I uh, will go to the next sheet and then we will um, rewrite it m q t t s gateway and this is connecting to what it is connecting to the m q t t broker not s broker, but the normal broker right it is connecting to the normal broker and this m q t t s is getting several connections from m q t t s clients perfect 
clients this could be client 1, client 2, client and so on and so forth. So, this is one let me put another arrow here show another one here uh, and all that ok. Now, you can do it two ways you basically create a connection between the server and the broker for every client that connects ok. If there is one client connecting there will be one connection if there are n clients connecting there will be n connections from the MQTT S to the broker clearly this is um, called transparent mode. this is transparent mode another mode is there which is called the aggregated mode this is mode 1 of MQTT S gateway another mode is there and that mode corresponds to what is known as the aggregated mode where you maintain. So, the picture is quite simple. Um, uh, so, what you do is um, I should remove this now. Now, somehow I do not feel like removing this. So, I will take another sheet simple I will take MQTT S gateway and multiple clients connecting. You can have a single connection to the MQTT broker this is called aggregated aggregated uh, mode ok that is the key thing. There is one last point which uh, when I was talking to Tejaswini it actually occurred that we should we can do several interesting things in fact MQTT S actually supports that what it says is look carefully at your original MQTT protocol. Original MQTT protocol says for every topic topic plus message is given right you are doing topic plus message in MQTT why do you want to send keep sending topic every time in the MQTT S world what you do you associate you send the topic only once with an ID to it and then you only start using the ID do not use any more topic do not say topic message topic do not keep using that word topic anymore just use the topic ID and keep publishing the data or subscribing to the data which is a clear indicator and again a clear uh, situation where you optimize for sensor networks and constrained environments that is the key takeaway of the uh, MQTT S uh, protocol ok. In order to facilitate in order to facilitate this uh, topic uh, uh, ID topic plus topic ID one time and keep reusing this topics there is a requirement actually topics there is a there are two things here there is a long topic and then there is a short topic you can use both actually IDs can be either long ID or short ID. In order to facilitate the possibility of using IDs and then the message topic ID plus message instead of topic plus message the MQTT S supports an additional set of messages uh, which is called register ok this is to register the topics that a client requires to publish this is to register the topics that a client that a client wishes to uh, topics that a client wishes to publish wishes to publish ok. And uh, exa exactly if you send out a register message what you will get back is a regac ok which essentially uh, allows you to 
complete you and uh, again essentially uh, facilitating reduction in key what is the key here reduction in bandwidth. Now go back and look up at the original abstract given by MQTT OSS standard it covers everything that we discussed in its uh, completeness right. So, this is the key point of uh, MQTT. Now finally, let us now uh, let us move on to understand the security aspects of MQTT security of security in uh, in MQTT ok. Um, I am not going to give you a full story here, but indeed we will do demonstrations of uh, security in MQTT and you understand everything with respect to that by seeing these demonstrations. But before we switch to demonstrations I want you to always uh, before you get into anything definitely go to open SSL open SSL dot org ok. You must visit https colon www open SSL dot org. I think this is going to hold the key to transport layer security either TLS or datagram transport layer security these are the two definitely protocols which will allow you to communicate between an MQTT client and a broker in the most secure manner secure manner manner currently currently the most secure manner you must look at that what as essentially it means is if you take an application layer where MQTT is running you have the session layer which essentially requires a session key a session key and then you have the transport layer um, uh, essentially like TCP or UDP ok. You are essentially using TCP and UDP in a secure manner which uh, which essentially will create the transport layer security and either if you are using TCP it will be TLS and if you are using UDP it will be DTLS ok. Um, essentially it is sitting here in these a little, uh, little above I would say somewhere exactly at the transport layer and completely giving you secure communication. And how do you know whether you are doing secure communication? Well, you are not going to use HTTP anymore, you are going to use HTTPS from now on, clearly indicating that TLS is playing a big role uh, in establishing the HTTP connection. It does not mean UDP does not have, that is why I wrote here DTLS, it is also a very important thing, they go hand in hand. But what is open SSL? What is it going to help you? And why should you look at this? Because anything with respect to security will essentially come you have to just note this one picture. So, I will write open SSL open SSL and I will put a picture which I expect that you will remember throughout um, with respect to understanding open SSL in. So, what is open SSL? Open SSL is nothing like a box which has a toolkit. Remember, open SSL is like a box which has toolkit. What all do you have? Screwdrivers, cutting pliers, right, nose pliers, and so on and so forth. These actually make a mechanics toolkit. Quite like that, open SSL is a crypto cryptographic toolkit, it is a toolkit. So, this toolkit will allow you to do several things, it is not a protocol please note open SSL is not a protocol. Protocols use open SSL, uh, but open SSL itself is not a protocol because 
open SSL is purely a toolkit. What is good about open SSL? It is open source that is why it is called open SSL. It provides robust commercial grade right commercial grade uh, full featured full featured toolkit as I mentioned it is a toolkit for this is important it provides a toolkit for TLS transport layer security and secure sockets layer SSL okay protocols these are protocols okay that is the key point I am trying to say. So, um, it is also a general purpose cryptographic library library okay. <coughs> and uh, you will see a lot about it. In fact, it is one of the most active uh, websites um, which has lot of updates updates coming up here. Okay. Why is open SSL, why am I making noise about open SSL? I want to draw your attention to a picture which I am going to draw in the MQTT world which will allow you which will give you an understanding of why this is important. Take an MQTT client. Okay, MQTT client okay, uh, which wants to connect to an MQTT broker. This is a broker. Okay. What will you do? You will specify the IP address of the broker here right before you do a publish. So, you will say let us take an example 10.114.1.16 is the let us say the IP address of this client and 10.114.1.17 as an example. For example, is the IP address of the broker right. Now, the question is this right. Uh, let us say this is um, map to uh, w, uh, let us say um, MQTT uh, no, I will just give it a name. Example, no, I will even give it a better name NPTEL dot example dot uh, MQTT, right? Um, something, let us say this is the name of the uh, MQTT broker, okay? Let us put it MQTT dot broker. This is what it maps to, let us say. Okay. Uh, now, what you are going to do and let us say this is um, let us give it also a name nptel dot example dot mqtt dot client. Let us give it two names very good. Now, um, first thing that will happen is uh, when uh, the client wants to connect to the broker he might even give this name nptel dot example in which case what will happen dns will kick in will pitch in and resolve the ip name address the full name to this particular address and there is an address record associated with this so dns address record will be fetched and it will be given to the mqtt client and the client will make a connection based on and it will get this IP address because address record will actually give you the mapping of name to address that address will come. Now, I want to ask you a question how are you sure how is the client sure how is the client sure that it is actually connecting to the server how does it know it is connecting to the server. In other words there is a possibility that there is a man in the middle which is hijacking and providing an IP address 
10.114 right and the client is now connecting to the attacker what is actually happening when the DNS goes out this attacker listens and quickly responds first attacker is very very aggressive when the DNS request goes out for fetching the uh, resolver this is nothing but the resolver when the resolver when the resolver issues uh, a request DNS request the attacker comes in even before the broker can respond and gives its IP and the MQTT client thinks that he can easily connect he thinks that this is indeed the broker and connects to the uh, attacker now thinking that it is the broker and starts publishing to the attacker instead of the broker. Well people know this and people have found that somehow we should avoid doing this right. So, what people have done is why should you use DNS at all use DNS sec secure DNS this will solve the problem perhaps. Now, let us see how does DNS sec work first is DNS sec works because the client is now going to look at certificates coming from the root down to MQTT down to example and down to uh, the actual server. So, it is going to cross check each time to find out whether this uh, certificates actually match at each and every level starting from the root uh, top level um, uh, from the root and, uh, and all the levels in the DNS actually it, uh, it matches everything whether that is matching or not that part it will do. But you can actually the attacker can be responding too in the same way right it uh, the attacker may actually be providing you certificate after certificate which essentially there is no way of uh, catching whether you are act connecting to the actual broker or not by just using DNSSEC that is not going to solve your problem. Therefore, people have sort of abandoned DNSSEC and decided that everything they want to do is with respect to open SSL and therefore, uh, security in the open SSL becomes a very important um, very important toolkit that you should understand and pay a lot of attention to MQTT's security related settings. I will now shift to the demonstration mode on my uh, laptop and we will see quickly several demonstrations uh, on how we are able to handle set security related things. I will give an overview and I will show you quickly several things. There are basically three ways by which you can secure your MQTT broker. All settings with respect to whatever we are discussing now is with respect to MQTT broker ok. First thing that you can do is you can do client ID prefix you can do a prefix this is a very important step that you can do. The second thing is simple authentication simple authentication which means please put the username and password right put the username and password username and password oops. Third thing is use certificates digital certificates both for authentication as well as for creating sessions 
and ensuring that data is encrypted and sent between the client and the broker. Now, if you look at certificates keep this picture in mind before demonstrations start. Remember three entities in the certificate world you and using open SSL. So, when you say certificates you are talking about the use of toolkit open SSL three entities have to be made a note one is called certificate authority the second one is the server which server do you mean MQTT server. Why am I using the word server? I will better use a better and the name that we know very well MQTT broker right and client when I say client I mean MQTT client. This open SSL commands in command line will allow you to create all these, uh, uh, these uh, certificates for all these three entities. You want this certificate authority because it is independently going to inform the client whether the server he is connecting is indeed a the right server or not. Remember DNSSEC in DNSSEC also you did not know although you verified certificate after certificate from the top level from the root uh, downwards upwards you went uh, you were able to look at the certificates it did not prevent that the certificates were uh, while they were all linked all right it may have actually come from the attacker. Here there is an independent certificate authority who will verify everything for you and actually let the client connect to the server and the client can satisfy itself that it is connecting to the right server. Well, there is a possibility that the server may also want to check whether it is connecting to the right client that is optional though, but you have to note that there is an independent uh, so that is still optional. So, these are essential elements you have a certificate authority and then this is the server and the client. So, let us now see uh, how all of this is actually done um, quickly and we can also look at some of the, um, the uh, to actually demonstrate whether this whole system using certificates actually uh, work very well. All right, so uh, point really I want to uh, before we go on to see the demonstration on the laptop you have to note that all we are using mosquito. So, mosquito uh, so let me write it well mosquito uh, server which is nothing but the broker and PAHO is the client. All modifications are being done to mosquito.conf .conf please note this file name and this is all where what we are going to do. The sequence of demonstrations will start with client ID followed by password then followed by certificate based uh, security configuration for brokers. So, let us start with the first one the first one is uh, let us start to the other screen the screen here you can see is uh, starting with let us go slowly now you basically want to uh, uh, basically what we have done here is you are publishing with a, uh, a, a id which is called c1 dash sensor the topic is MQTT the message is hello. So, let us see what happens to this you can see that this was done successfully. Now, what we will do is remove the uh, client prefix and transmit it again and see what happens. So, you can see that it was refused. So, very simple thing you can do configure in mosquito.conf the client prefix. So, let us open that file and see what exactly happens in that file. So, let us see you can see here it is nicely pointing let us take the cursor there take the cursor there cursor there exactly there come to the cursor here yes 
you can see there the cursor is pointing to client prefix C1 that means it will have to look for C1. So, so if so it is like security uh, through obscurity right this is something like that. So, this is the simplest do something but keep it secure this is the first part of the demo. The second thing is with is with respect to passwords. Now, in order to get to passwords you have to do um, allow anonymous false you, if it is true earlier it was true now we have made it false and then you have to create a password file and in our case we have called it password.txt and there you should mention the password. So, let us see what actually happens there again note that we are modifying mosquito.conf all right. So, now I do this uh, we continue with the same exercise uh, you say mosquito pub minus d the prefix is c1 um, topic is mqtt message is hello um, uh, then you have um, the uh, username is sensor underscore sub and the password is fetch data fantastic it works all right. So, now let us see what happens you will remove the what we will do is we will remove and put a wrong password here right. So, you can see that it has refused the connection um, has it uh, no it has not refused the connection um, what is the connection here what is the password here yeah the right password is this. So, let us see no I think there is some uh, let us oh, so we did not restart that was an issue. Um, so, let us restart yeah sorry. So, every time you make changes to the file mosquito.conf what is important is to stop the daemon and restart the daemon and you can see now the effect has taken place. So, this is another lesson that you learn that every time you modify the uh, configuration file you must uh, restart the daemon. So, that changes are affected just by making modifications to the conf file is not going to take you very far. Please note this these are very simple things, but they start playing a very important role. Now, what you do is go back to this conf file and look at all these um, these three uh, settings. You have the certificates um, essentially uh, the, the first one is the uh, CA certificate that you see here the second one is the um, server certificate and the third one is the server key right. These three things are there here the listener port is 1883 um, and now let us see how this works ok. So, now that these certificates have been uh, created you will have to restart the daemon. So, we will restart otherwise this effect would not take place uh, now we will start putting the uh, right password the right username and the uh, CA certificate path right. So, let us put the path to the certificate. Yes, etc mosquito certs ca dot crt and the port is mentioned as one eight one double eight three right. Fantastic, it works right. This is the best. This is using TLS, and indeed it has full security enabled on um, the uh, uh, this. Uh, so so this essentially this essentially uh, tells you that it is fully secured you have client id prefix you have passwords and you also have all the certificates installed. So, that only a, only TLS is now working in, uh, in I, I is working completely. Now, just to complete the story let us remove the uh, CA certificate 
uh, or give it a wrong path or uh, try something which is um, just to demonstrate that without this um, you can see that it does not connect. So, you can see that in summary these steps have to be done and uh, you have to ensure that the uh, uh, highest possible level of security actually is enabled for um, the MQTT uh, protocol. Now, in summary you may now ask a question how am I going to pull off all this on very constrained uh, devices. One option that you can think of is at least you must be able to most microcontrollers today provide you encryption on the fly essentially they will allow you to uh, encrypt uh, they have the AES encryption uh, symmetric key encryption like AES in hardware implemented in hardware. So, you should perhaps you know put the key during the factory dispatch itself and then have another way of changing that key using bootstrapping techniques that is possible and these are very very mature ways of doing it. So, please do look up bootstrapping techniques for change in the default AES key uh, in order to ensure that um, uh, on constrained devices like the MQTT S clients minimum you should have is a data encryption running ok. And there may be um, another uh, possibility that you may actually hold the uh, sessions if you are uh, working with um, if you are transmitting data um, you know all this essentially means TLS essentially is a overhead in terms of establishing a connection after you. So, before you actually do any data transmission there is this uh, basic handshake TLS a huge handshake protocol which happens by uh, you know this uh, certificate exchanges verification by the client the certificate authority uh, coming into picture and then saying yes everything is fine you can connect and all that means there is a handshake associated. That handshake part if you want to avoid and that is a lot of data being transmitted between the broker and the client each time um, you want to run TLS. Therefore, there are options in MQTT which will allow you to hold you do once you do the handshake once you keep the session key uh, permanently with you and then use that uh, session key for all subsequent transmissions. So, do explore the chapter on security in MQTT specification to understand completely the capability of this exciting IoT protocol.